Good morning, everybody. Happy Eclipse Day. And if you're on the replay, it might be good afternoon, good evening, and good night. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. Um, this is a live art cast, so he is going to be tracking me with cameras in real time live as it's happening and also reading your comments and questions. So there's going to be a lot going on from John. And for me, I'm going to be showing you guys how to paint dark pine. I got really creative in my naming with this, um, but this is Dark Pine. It is a totality eclipse, and this was part of a vote. A lot of times I share art with you guys, and you guys give me feedback, and we had three paintings we were looking at. Tropical uh, uh, Totality Beach won, but a lot of people felt like this was reflective of the actual path of totality. Mm. So I decided, hey, let's visit this again, and I kind of finished it and resolved it more. And so this is what we're going to be painting today. And again, it's a study in red. Let's look at the materials. Oh, my gosh. We have such so many people showing up for us this early morning. I know. It's for like, everyone who's here, it's the Donna. I know. Thank it, you. It, Everybody like... in California, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't even show up for me at 6 a.m., so thank you. Yeah, we've over 200 people, and they're still coming. So it's just like, wow, man. It's morning time for that, everyone. It, and, it's well, amazing. Evening for India. Yeah. And and uh, in like and uh, Australia and so we sort of finally England, figured out afternoon. the world clock, <laughs> yeah. well, and realized that this was sort of a sweet spot for a uh, more global audience. Yeah, and well, actually, everybody in 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 chat is all greeting each other at the appropriate daytime <laughs> intervals. So because other people are better at the world clock than us, <laughs> <laughs> and they're just all over. So yeah, tell us what you got. I got a nine by twelve canvas board. Right here, this these are they come in packs. They're pre-gessoed. You don't generally need to do another thing to them unless they're giving you grief. They should be just ready to paint on. Mm -hmm. Over here, I have this very interesting color palette. I have Indian yellow, Prussian blue, naphtha red medium, titanium white, Aliza and crimson, cad red light. I have some fluid. Uh, black here. This is a soft body paint, but look, you guys could use black gesso or black paint. Any of that is fine. And right here in the center, this milky bit is this gloss glazing liquid that slows down the drying time of my paint and also lets me glaze. And then, of course, I have my mister so I can mist. Somebody was asking about that the other day. How are you keeping your paint from drying out without misting it? No, I'm misting it. Misting it. <laughs> and I have a couple wishes on my canvas today. Yep. Um, we had a wish for Ethan to be surrounded by healers. He went through a car accident, and his mom's just wishing that he gets better really soon. And then a very sweet wish uh, in chat this morning from Nick. He is wishing that his wife and baby, are, that his baby's delivered safely, and his wife and baby are super healthy. Mm -hmm. And with him really soon. So yeah. we wish that with you, too. And so I'm going to sketch this in. Oh, yes. While we're, you know, killing time before the eclipse. Yes. I don't right. know why I went Ren and Stimpy on that <laughs> one, but okay. I'm it's going morning to. Time. It's morning. I'm going to get this nice little number four mm -hmm. bright, and I'm going to just sort of sketch this in with maybe some alizarin today. Listen, guys, I have a traceable, right? These You can absolutely use them to transfer this image on canvas, and it's not cheating. It's perfectly allowed to trace things on if drawing is not your bag yet. Mm -hmm. Don't stress about it. Just trace it on and paint along. I would never want you not to start your creative journey over something like a drawing skill. Yeah. And, you know, drawing is just a skill. So if you look at your canvas and you think this is the halfway mark, I'm going to say about three fingers down from the halfway mark over on the right, I'm going to make a little mark. And if you imagine this canvas is in half, just a hair past the halfway mark and a little bit up from this mark on the right, I'm going to make a mountain. Mountains wander. And they have all kinds of like jaggedy lines. So don't feel like you've got to hold a straight line on any mountain you ever do. I'm going to come down oh, about an inch and a half. And then just past this and down, I'm going to make a little another upward little mark. And this little guy is going to wander down too. Mm -hmm. I like to wander the plain surface of the mountain here. So I come to the point and I'm gonna come down and ooh, let's wander back. So now we have some some shapes, some landscape. And I'm gonna show you guys some tricks on how to add some simple mountains that will look amazing in your paintings. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna have up here 
is I'm going to mark with a little of my my naphtha right here. This is about where I'm going to be putting my eclipse. So I'm going to be starting by making kind of a gradated circular ombre, right? Because there's two gradations in the sky. There's the radial gradation, right? That's wherever your light source is. And then there's also a uh, gradation from Linear. the top of your canvas to the bottom. Linear. Linear. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. I remember this. You talked about it the other day. Yes. With other words that made more sense. I'm going to get a slightly bigger brush to do my job more deftly. I think just more words. More words. Some <laughs> words. Good morning words. So what I'm doing here is I dip my brush. This is a number eight bright. I'm going to dip it lightly in the water. I'm using a synthetic brush. Let me sip some coffee. Good grief, people. <laughs> Good morning. Arden in the morning is so good for you. Look, the good news is, is you don't have to be able to talk. You can art before you can talk. Mm -hmm. I have I have gotten up bleary eyed and arted well before I could talk. <laughs> so I'm going to just come around here with my naphtha, uh, yes, naphtha red medium. And I'm just making these circular strokes. Just talking about, hey, this is happening on here. Now, one thing I like to do is I like to come at this stage and get a little of my Indian yellow. You could use cad yellow deep. You could use cad yellow, whatever yellow you have. And I'm going to just blend a little bit of it here while everything is still wet. Because I like to. Then back into the red. And I'm going to come tone this whole sky. Just tone my whole sky now that I know where my eclipse is going in the placement of my canvas. Now, is naphthal crimson the same as naphthal red? They're pretty close, and with what you have is naphthal crimson. I have not looked at the exact pigment number. If you ever want to know if a color is the exact same thing, so see here, PR5. Look at your tube for the pigment number. This is pigment red number five. Hmm. If yours says pigment red number five, doesn't really matter what it says up here at all. This is like a vanity name. Some companies are very responsible about calling them what they historically would be called and making sure that this matches this, and some are not. So you're looking for PR5. Yeah, and I think that, yeah, so there's... So that's just an interesting thing you might not know about your tubes of paint. That's the secret sauce in your tube of paint. They try to be all artful and creative on you, but you can be like, nope, I just read the pigment name, so I know. Windsor blue is thalo blue. Gotcha. Cannot fool me. Can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like you do, someone says in chat. <laughs> like you do. <laughs> I'm just painting this around. I'm just enjoying that, covering up this white canvas. I think there's a real joy to covering up a white canvas. Makes me super happy. Mm -hmm. Super happy. Like, ah, you'll take the paint. <laughs> Sorry. Morning Sherpa is a whole different flavor of Sherpa. <laughs> I'm much singier in the morning. So I'm taking this. I'm leaving a little bit of this white here, you'll notice, as I'm coming down. It's just a few inches above the mountains. And listen, guys, notice that this is very streaky. Yes. That's totally okay because we're going to have lots of layers here. Now I'm going to come back into my nice little Indian yellow. And I'm going to just, I haven't rinsed my brush out, so I have red pigment on here. I'm just going to add this sort of glowing orangey effect here. See that? Yeah. Nice glowing orangey effect. Painting it in here. For a happy little sky. Happy skies. Happy skies. So hopefully you guys are excited about the eclipse today. Yes, there's lots of people very excited about the eclipse today. Can so, I? And actually there was, a, there was a question that had come in here that was, was in, uh, interesting. Oh, I love interesting questions. Uh, and, uh, so can w the question was, can you mix oils and acrylics in one painting? No, well, okay. 
<laughs> I was about to say no, but that's not entirely true. This is how this works. You can paint oils over an acrylic painting. So say that I did this painting starting out in acrylic. Let it dry. And I wanted to finish it in oils. I could absolutely do that. I could varnish it. That painting would be perfect. That painting would be archival. It is a totally accepted technique. What you cannot do is paint an oil painting and then finish it in acrylics. Because the acrylics do not bond to the oils properly and it will delaminate over time. But once the acrylic is cured, oil will bond right to it. Right on top of it. So it loves it, which is why you can use acrylic gesso under an oil painting. Interesting. But I wouldn't use any oil-based products as a ground for an acrylic. Mm. Yes. Right. Definitely and speak to your manufacturers on those things. Yeah, and, <laughs> and if there's a prep that lets you paint over an oil with acrylic, I have not found it. But if I ever do, I'll make a whole video about it. Okay. All right. I was just sippy sipping. Sippy sippy. Sippy sippy. Now the next thing I'm going to do is sort of just lay in my two tones for my mountains. And my first tone for my mountain, I'm going to take a little a laser in crimson over to my Prussian blue. Mm -hmm. If you had phthalo blue, that would be fine. That's what you have. Don't worry about it. And on this side of the mountain, right, I'm going to put in my shadow color. And I'm not going to be too precious about it because it's a mountain. It's all craggy. I think sometimes it's very hard when we're perfectionists to um, paint loosely. And I've been thinking about how, you know, one could lean into being a perfectionist and at the same time painting loosely. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if it's about like just like perfectly painting loosely. <laughs> You know, but I think don't feel bad about that. I, I sometimes hear um, people who have a tendency towards perfectionism really kind of being rough on themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that, hey, we are all exactly as we should be. And your perfectionism is a superpower. You guys, you know, you keep everything running. You make sure stuff is findable. You, you know, help all of us, you know, other people figure out how to organize our cupboards. I mean, like, how would we all function? There'd be no filing system, no Dewey Decimal, you know. So definitely never apologize for uh, being the awesomeness that you are. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. so I had a question here. That, hmm. that interesting question. So, it, this I, is a question. If uh, if you didn't have access to to canvas or canvas boards, um, they were asking if uh, if I gessoed a cardboard box, will it give it the same effect as canvas, or will it soak in the paint? It will soak in the paint. What you can do is you can create an isolation coat on your cardboard to prep it. Um, that is a sealed surface that's non-porous. Gesso is porous, so what's in the cardboard can come up into the paint, and the paint can come down into the cardboard. It's all gesso is is to create a white neutral you know, surface that's a particular texture, right? So it has all these like ch uh, chalk ingredients in it and different ground up particulates and it's made with a polymer and it just makes a nice surface for you to paint on. But it is in no way a sealant. Mm. It's just a surface prep. It's like, you know how like kills is kind of like a thing that seals your wall? Just it was in no way like that. Right. So there's, no. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, no. there's, there's sealer primer, there's sealers, primers, and grounds. So there's lots of different things that you can do. Yeah, there. and this is more in a um, ground surface prep kind of thing. Yeah. You'd need to do like um, GAC 100, uh, which is Golden Acrylic Colors 100. Mm -hmm. You can get that at a lot of places. Um, is a great sealer. And then um, uh, also acrylic uh, medium and varnish by Liquitex. Cool. All right, let's do the light surface. Mm. So this time I'm going to be a little blue over to the red. See, we're over here. I'm going to get some white. Now, I still want it to be purpley. That's a little too red. It's interesting. You want it to be the red side of purple, but definitely feel different than the sky above it. There we go. See, that's perfect. That's perfect, perfect, perfect. 
Just nice. grabbing a little light. See, I'm just keeping the paint on the edge of my bristles here. Mm -hmm. I come here to the edge and I pull out a little bit all precious like. I'm like, wee, 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 and then I come over here. It's a good way to manage paint. I'm not mixing my two bits of paint together. I'm about to miss my palette again. <laughs> it's a dry day in the studio. <laughs> so just covering that canvas. I'm going to dip my brush in water because the paint is feeling a little bit thick. Notice though that when I do that, it doesn't make a lake. Oh, it yeah. just thins my paint a bit. And I get asked a lot, can I add water or acrylic paint? Because there is some thinking out there in the art world. There's always some thinking in the art world that you shouldn't add water to acrylic paint. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I've But, heard you know, <laughs> it's actually designed to have water in the not adding water is kind of like this really cool purist way of doing it. But it's not a necessary way of doing it, if it, that makes sense. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's interesting because when you talk to paint engineers, they have engineering design specifications for the paint. Right. Like, it can tolerate this much water. It can tolerate this much right, abuse. Right, it's like 30%. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, but when you talk to artists, they, there's an effect. Uh, and, and I won't say it's ephemeral because it's... There's, it's definitely something you can you can see and tangibly touch. And well, see, and, 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 and yeah, it's like in fade and in yeah, in performance and stuff like that. And they'll be like, no, I only use mediums, which is a total option and gives you a great result. But water is okay. Yeah, but I mean that's sort of like when you're when you're when you're at that like last two percent tuning of trying to get an effect. Yeah. You know, and you're like, do I use water? If I take water out, maybe that'll give me the effect. You know, that's you know. And it is. It's, it's a tuning, and it's something, you know, professional artists get to enjoy, um, you know, thinking about. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. No, it's really cool. But not necessarily the only answer. All right. Do you see how very easily, by just creating these two tones, mm. we have done mountains by doing muted purples. We've pushed those mountains back. So when we mute an object, we push it far away. <laughs> the cooler... And grayer it is, the farther it is from our eye. Wow. Yeah. Cooler being like if you're on a color scale, and warm colors being red, yellow, orange, and cool colors being green, blue, purple. Mm -hmm. The cooler it is, the more towards the, cool, the cooler side of the color wheel, and the grayer it is, the further back it goes. Yeah. Just something you might not know. Well, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, and, and it's good to know those things so that when you're, like, doing atmospheric effects or things like that, then you can, you know. Really execute those. So now yeah. I'm using this. This is, uh, we figured this out yesterday. It was about an inch and a quarter, <laughs> inch and a half. It's just a nice circle that I can trace around um, if my canvas doesn't move on me. Which it might. You should move it to the center. That way you're. Huh? Oh. Move what? I was just saying, in, in the middle of your easel, there's a bar that goes through it. So if you push in the center then it won't move as much no it's it's it can't oh. it can't get to those because of the pegs oh, man the pegs prevent that sorry it's okay was a neat thought though <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be great if that were true all right now i'm going to just take a minute and go ahead and give myself a black hole sun <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> the 90s just came and woke me up <sighs> oh life and then see I just went to an REM song so you know it's going to be that kind of a morning and then the late 90s came and said you can go back to sleep now no no I'm gonna just enjoy that that helps me just with placement as I am finishing out my sky alright so I'm going to just take this is just a bright, and I'm going to finish out my sky. And this is a lot of fun, I feel. Yes. 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 I'm going to come and take a little of my alizarin and a smidge. See, smidge? Smidge. Smidge. Of my Prussian. And I'm going to just start darkening my sky. Here's my glazing medium. So because what I was trying to do here when I designed this was talk about the night sky effect where it looks like night during the daytime and there's some very unusual lighting and I 
spent quite a lot of time in the design studio creating artful ways of expressing that mm -hmm. and then asking John questions about solar eclipses because he is our telescope head <laughs> in our household. <laughs> He's super into it. There's actually, there's a, I was just watching out here in chat. Everyone's having a, having a good time. They were singing lyrics with you. Were they singing <laughs> lyrics with they me? Were. Who's singing lyrics? Shout somebody out. Well, Raven was just, he just, Raven. He had just been going through a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> so. So I'm just darkening this here, right? I'm just trying to create this effect of night, daytime. Mm -hmm. And I'm using color to do it. The cooler is helping me do this. I oh. love my cooler. Little Brush Allison says hello. Hi, little. Oh. Hi, little Brush Allison. It's How are you doing? Morning time. Morning. There are there. I think there. <laughs> Good morning, sunshine. All right. Lots of people are happy to see this morning show with you. So I'm just blending this, right? This is a very light pressure, if you'll notice. And the uh, Lizrin Crimson actually is kind of very transparent. And even with the addition of the Prussian Blue, it still remains so. Right? So I'm going to get a little of my, my naphthol here on my brush. And just come back here and blend between that mix and my Eclipse, and then I might even rinse out my brush, radical that I am, hmm. and get some of my Indian Yellow, and come between these two fields, blending it. Now the trick to blending at this stage is the fact that this paint and this paint is still all wet. Acrylic paint is awesome, and it, it everything about what makes it kind of challenging is what I love about it. It dries really quickly. And because of that, it easily makes something called a hard edge. Where we struggle as acrylic painters and oil painters maybe have an easier time is a soft edge, a soft blended edge. So to get that in acrylic, what we've got to do is work pretty quickly and either blend wet into wet, use like a blending medium or a glaze, or dry brush. And in this case, I'm going wet into wet. Wet into wet. Yeah. Sounds like we're making a mess, but what we're making is a beautiful mess. All right, see that there? Yeah. So that's creating a nice basis for the glow that we're going to be enjoying later. And I'm now going to come down here. I'm going to get a little of my naphthol and my nice little Indian yellow. And I'm going to just start making this sort of atmospheric cloud effect. And here's what I'm doing. So here's my brush planted on the corner of the and I'm going to just push down and push up and I'm going to be as random as I can. Look at this. Wiggle, 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 flick. Wiggle, 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 flick. Sometimes, you know, when people are watching, they're like, oh, you must have like some like very intense, you know, extreme plan that's happening here. That's not actually what's going on. I'm just being relaxed about it and making random shapes that I'm not overworking. Here along the mountains, I'm getting on the edge of my brush and painting more neatly. And then I'm back to that sort of randomness. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, interestingly enough, is I'm going to pick up some pure CAD red light. And I'm going to just very lightly along the top, see this? create this implied cloud. Is that not crazy? Yeah. It's like this, this crazy implied cloud. And see, I'm just being very random and saying it's wispy and distant and atmospheric and these colors are blending softly into each other and that's what's letting me get away with this. Layering the reds on reds. Sometimes it's hard to know how to do reds on reds. Hmm. You know, strongly red pieces, strongly blue pieces can be really challenging. 
So if you'll notice here, I kept my brush strokes very open. Oh, yeah, it's very you know, like, impasto-y, like, like, too. And then just opened it up. When I say open, I mean I get I left a space. There are parts that go up. There are parts that go down. Everything is as random as can be. I like to call it like Jackie Chan. <laughs> like to Jackie Chan, my, my sky. Now I'm going to take a little of this red and kind of come around my black hole sun. That's going to be it for me now. Yep. Because I'm going to be playing that in my head. And I'm going to very lightly dry brush. Kind of a corona, this little space that's coming out. See? Cadmium, if you do invest in real cadmium pigment, has a tendency to glow to the eye. That's why our artists bother with it. You know. But, you know, the thing about cadmium is a great place to save money mm -hmm. is by purchasing hue. So a lot of people, right? Oh, wow, that's so I'm noticing the picture in picture versus the one there. It looks you notice what I'm talking about? It looks really blown out, but it's not No, let me see here. I mean I can just say camera the the, the Here, picture. here. You know what I'm saying? Ah, oh, let's see here. Oh actually see when you put that one back up, that one the, that one's not as bright. See, I'm thinking. See look, no bring that other picture. The other one oh, okay. Up. See, if you bring it back up. Now look in the picture. Yeah, I now think I've got to bring some of this down yeah, into yeah. this. See, see, look in the camera. You can see that that one's. All right. So let me get some more of this alizarin. Yeah. Always good to check. It just. And I'm going to come bring this down into this because this got real bright on me. It just got. And that'll happen. That, yeah. All right. So you can always check. You can always go back. You can always like. Be like, is this what I'm, you know, looking to create here? Mm -hmm. Might as well. Might as well. Now, do you uh, have um, just deepening that up? Three. If you if you were just to you know pick three primary colors plus black and white, which which primaries would you work with? I would work with primaries. I'd work with primary cayenne, primary yellow, and primary magenta. And we have some videos um, about that very thing. Gotcha. No, it I would definitely, definitely do that. All right, there we go. Just bringing some of yeah. that in there. Oh, yeah, that. Just take some of that depth. So this is about creating contrast and value. And sometimes you've got to get back from your piece, because if you're way up on it, you may not be able to see all the elements of what it has going on. All right, yeah. let's start putting in our little um, diamond ring effect. And I think that you may have used, let me see here on that. Uh, oh. What? Oh, no, I was just looking at that. That looks really cool. I was just making sure that my, all everything was all adjusted properly. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, nothing you're doing. It was all me. I'm just looking at my camera. Oh, going, okay. Uh, I'm going, hey, do I have everything adjusted right? And I'm looking at it. And I'm like, yeah, it's all pretty dialed in. So. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm coming around the edge of this with this number four bright. And I'm just pulling out a little bit. See, I'm just letting the brush sort of be very streaky and strokey. Yeah. This is the first pass at this. I don't want to take it out too far because we're, again, doing this diamond ring corona. Is that what it's called, the diamond ring corona? You know, I'm I'm not sure. I don't, you know, I, 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 uh... To be honest, I've not seen that many full eclipses to know the n the, the name for what they call that ring. Ah, oh, I just looked like a thousand pictures. <laughs> yeah, I you know I'm I'm sure that it had, there's a bunch that's of what nicknames. Google said it was called. So I was just like, okay, Google. Now I'm gonna just pull some of these out very lightly because I don't want them to all be the same length. I want to nature varies up things. So the trick of this is this is dry brushing. I don't have a lot of water in my brush. I have pigment and I'm just very lightly dusting over this. Very lightly dusting over this. All right, the other place that I'm going to come with this is right here. I'm going to start the diamond little dot and I'm going to just Ooh. brush this flare effect. 
That's where the sun just starts to peek out the other side yeah. of the... Uh, now, if I do it with just white, it looks a little, a little crazy. So what I like to do is come back with some yellow and tone that all hmm. so that it's not so jarring. So I'm going to come back with some yellow. And I'll just very carefully oh, apply yeah. some of that around here. Just to keep it from being too jarring. That's really cool. But some of it still. No, it looks, I like that. That's, I, I like how this uh, captures a lot of the, you know, how the sky can change and how the, the, you know, just how intense the intensely black it can appear in the sky. Yeah. You know, and even though I'm gonna get a little white on here and just come back in the center for the center of this, so it's like got three layers there. So keep going. No, no, that, and that's and that's you know what what you, I think is interesting is you find a lot of people talk about how intense, uh, how intensely different the light quality is during this time and how the sky changes and the environment changes. Now, while I've got a little of the white on my brush with the yellow, I might come here and just add, maybe add a little red to that. I just want it to be just a little bit here. Looks really neat. Just adding some yellow. How's that looking? Yeah. Do, do, do. Oh, I see it in the painting here, but I don't see it in the picture. Oh maker. no! I, I think you can't see as much in there. The yellow really shows up here. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'm really liking that. You're in a bright. That's studio. making me super happy. Now I'm going to finish out my mountains. Yeah. So how I'm going to do my mountains is I'm going to get a little of my alizarin. Mm -hmm. I'm still on this number four. Actually, I'm going to have a sippy sippy. And so how are you guys doing? Is the painting Did coming along good. for you so far? Yeah. Yeah, we've we've already you know we we broken Sherpa. We probably should give you some music to dance to. I would to. dance. I, you know, it's let oh, me sippy so, sippy and dance, so, and I'll I let you guys kind of catch up. Unless you want to boogie with me the, and Sherpazoid a you, little bit. Is it is it the Sherpazoid? Is that where it? Do I get bubbles too? Do you get? I, do you get <gasps> I don't. They're unplugged. I, we get <laughs> you can, no bubbles for me on Eclipse Day. We can we can. I'm sure we can find some bubbles. It's a sad boogie now. No, Bubbles is a sad boogie. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, I gotta find a plug. I'm being a child. Manual bubbles. Manual bubbles? Oh my goodness, I get manual bubbles. <laughs> Don't forget to dance. <laughs> if you can't really boogie around, just move your like nose and your fingers. I love what John says. He's like, wiggle your nose, wiggle your toes. Well, yeah, no, we, we do. When we get together, we we have over 300 people together. We like to celebrate that we're Sherpa, and that's because you know every day is a celebration, and we get together and paint, and that's a lot of fun. And so, but if you can't get up and dance with us, then it's always good to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes because you know that's what you can do. That's what we got to do too. So. You know, it's just fun to, to be able to a little, add a little fun to our day, even though it's early in the morning and we're still like, we're like, we're like, we're like force booting the fun. It's like, we're going to get it going today. No, I'm fine in the morning. Morning is my time. I just, I don't necessarily make sense. We don't articulate morning. well yet. I don't articulate well yet, but I'm in a good mood. All right. So I've just taken a little smidge of white over to my phthalo blue, a little smidge of the alizarin. And I'm adding just this next dimension mm -hmm. to my mountain. I'm just very lightly dry brushing this down over my little kind of underpainting. There we go. And then uh, maybe a little bit of this right here. I might come back with a, a deep blue in this crevice. 
just kind of brush that back because I really want this to be in shadow. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of the alizarin, some blue, a smidge of white. The smidge of white just allows you to sort of see a bit of the blue. See, but it feels cool and in shadow. Right? Mm -hmm. Pulling that down. Wipe off my brush. I can come back with some just blue here and just make sure that this is fully defined in its shadow. Right? Mm -hmm. Fully defined. Now on top, I can come and get some white, maybe just a little red. And this is much lighter. And I can come down, just dry brushing. And I, when I'm dry brushing, I'm allowing a lot of what is underneath to sort of still show through. See? Looking pretty good. Pretty good. Now, I yeah. actually kind of want that, I think, more in a gray shadow. Yeah. So I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and my red and do something crazy. I'm going to add a little yellow to it. It's going to gray it out. So I want it to be a little more in a gray shadow, not quite as bright as what's next to it. See? Yeah. Still a tone of what's next to it. I'll just dry br I'll br brush this slightly darker color, this gray darker color. So what we talked about is cooled and grayed, right? Cooled and grayed is a distant mountain. Now, the thing that makes this mountain awesome sauce, so I'm going to get my brush a little smidge dirty with that gray. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to just put my brush in it and then take off the extra pigment. And then I'm going to get some of my yellow and my white. And that's going to give me a slightly dirty but still warm highlight that I can softly brush. See that? On top here. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That sort of little sunlight. And that's it. That's all you got to do for the mountain. And that's just awesome. It's just awesome. Back into the alizarin crimson. Uh, actually, I think I'm going to do this one. I'm going to underpaint this naphthol and then come back with my alizarin and then my cad. Mm. I'm just crazy like that. It just, just makes it much easier. <laughs> so this is the next row. So we've got the distant mountains and they have been grayed and cooled. But I want a mid-mountain, so what am I going to do? I'm going to warm that up. I'm going to get my naphthol. I'm going to come here first, and I'm going to make a nice little implied mountain. So this is going to kind of come out from the right here. Maybe go down to a little valley. And once I have that in, I'm going to just make sure that I've got all the rest of the canvas, and I'm going to flip this over so I can do this easily, red. Yes. So all the rest of this canvas is now red. This is too bright and cheerful of a red for this space in the landscape. Yeah. But it gives me wonderful base painting to dry brush my lizard over. And then when I pop it with the CAD, it's going to be just like, wow, that's crazy. And again, that's how do I use all reds to make this really fun landscape effect. Right? Now, to dry brush over this, though, effectively, I'm going to really, really need to dry my canvas. So real quick, I'm going to hair dry it and let you talk to John. Oh. <laughs> well, right as that happened, we had all the kids come in and give hugs this morning. We let them sleep in so we could have some quiet time. And they did. They slept in almost till nine. That's so funny. That So all the little kids are coming in, running around, saying hello. 
And it's good to see all of our friends here today. All you guys are up and going with us. Or, you know, some of you are staying up in the afternoon with us. And uh, so I guess there's folks all over the world doing all sorts of things today. So thank you guys for all coming and hanging out in whatever time it is you're doing. And uh, I hope to see your paintings of eclipses and things. So we do want to see all those posted up on social media when you guys have a chance. We'd love to see those. Um, and if you're viewing to the eclipse today, again, prop be sure to use proper eye safety when you're doing that. And uh, that is uh, if you're using uh, solar viewing glasses, please check on the NASA website to make sure that they are uh, they're safe, that there's, a, there's some standards that they have up there. And, uh, you know, to just uh, please check, double check with NASA on, on, your, on your eye safety. So. <laughs> John is very concerned about eye safety. Yes. Which I think is awesome. It's stars or space lasers. Stars or space lasers. During the hairdryer, you might have noticed me brush some color up here. And that is because I touched the canvas before it was dry and I pulled off and made a thumbprint. So I'm just repairing that mm -hmm. is all that's happening there. And so how, that's how I repair my canvas is I just wait till it's dry and then I paint over it. Yeah. I'm going to add a little smidge of my Prussian to my alizarin we like lots we do. Of, lots of little brushes with us this morning. Good morning. I love that everybody's painting. I hope I'm going to see a ton of sunsets. I hope you guys are going to share with me on Facebook and eclipses. Instagram and Twitter and just everywhere a bunch of sunsets. Eclipses. E sorry, eclipses. Ecl Thank it's you. It's an eclipse. Wow. I like the morning. I, mean, I do. I just apparently... It's a new skill I need to learn to talk before <laughs> noon. It's sort of a sunset if the moon set the sun. If the moon set the sun. The moon was just oh, like, Oh, that's beautiful. No, I'm, you're going to, it's like, I got to have more me time today. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to very loosely cover this background with this dark color. I'm going to let a lot of it kind of even show through. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Doesn't that make a glow? It creates it's as if the earth is glowing. And an interesting depth to it. It does. It does some really cool stuff. It helps the painting feel finished. And notice I'm not like very like neat and tidy about it. I hear sneezes. Yes. The, little, the, the littlest ones are awake. Sneezing in the morning. Morning wake up sneezes. Who gets those? So I'm just pulling this in. I'm not going to touch my canvas again because I don't feel like replacing th thumbprints. So this is what I'm doing. I'm just, you know, making sure this is covered, but there's, there's crazy glow to the landscape. I feel like that's important. It creates this really wild effect. And when people look at the canvas, they're going to be really trying to figure out how you did what you did which is one of the fun things. All right, so I've taken a little of my Prussian blue and my lizard and crimson, and I'm gonna come make some trees. These are fun and easy trees because they're far away. So I'm gonna take the corner of my brush and I go dip, 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 dip. Let me make some uneven, crazy lines. Now, a lot of this gets covered by my pine tree, but that doesn't mean I don't wanna do it because as I'm painting my pine tree, I can't really say necessarily what the pine branches are going to cover and what they're not. And so it's just easier on me to enjoy making a little pine bank than try to get in there with a teeny tiny brush and fix it later. So what did you just put oh, out I there? Just, thank you, you caught that. I need to put out alizarin. Ah, so they, and that. I put out naphthol. Oh. I just turned my mic down because the kids were pouring out Legos in the background. Oh. <laughs> There we go. All right. So I've got some alizarin here. Okay. I'm going to take some Prussian to my alizarin. Right? And let's just keep making some little banks of trees. And see how I'm doing this? I'm being very uneven. I go up and down. They're not like little notches like this. They're little hot, messy dashes. At the valley, I want the valley to be kind of smooth down here. And then I'm going to start back up the other side with some oh. more trees. Now, it's these trees are important because, you know, you can see them and stuff. 
they saw they found a cat in the pallet. What? There's a cat in the middle of the pallet, a kitty cat in the middle of the cat pallet. Oh, I see him. It's the two little drops, and then there's some ears, and <laughs> that's so cute. I'll try not to mess him up. <laughs> All right. So see how I'm just making these little tree branches? I'm just taking my little brush and planting it down and up and down and up, 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 and then down, 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 down. Right? Up here at the outer edges, I will let them be a little darker. There we go. You can take another little bit of this if you need to, right in your mountain. I'm just brushing that pigment back. I'm going to rinse this out, and I'm going to get my smaller brush. I'm going to get, and this is like secret sauce here, my CAD red light. This is so warm and so saturated against this cool burgundy. It is really going to have an effect. And at the front of my little trees, I'm going to add a smidge of color. And that Adding a smidge of color to the front of my little trees. And then on the inside edge here, I'm going to come here and add smidges of the color. Look at that. Smidge, smidge, smidge. Smidge, 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 smidge. And then I get to have do this fun thing in the bottom of my valley. I'm going to just brush back and forth a little bit of this red. Yeah, interesting. All reds, and yet we're telling a neat landscape story. Yeah. When that's all done, I get to come and add a bit of landscape. I'm going to flip my canvas, but this time try not to make thumbprints. <laughs> I'm going to come to the bottom here. And on the eclipse side, I'm going to make a little line that angles up and kind of comes back. That's my rock. <laughs> You're making an upside down rock. <laughs> I am. But just try not to, if, as long as you don't tell your brain what you're doing, it'll, it'll work with you. So basically all you're doing is coming from your upper right diagonal, moving towards your lower left diagonal, making some jaggy shapes. Just give your brain, like put it on a need to know basis sometimes yeah. when you're making creative decisions. <laughs> I'm going to come over on the left hand side, which is when it's flipped up right, the right. It's this crazy thing. And I'm going to just scoop a little bit of foreground silhouette. All right? A little bit of foreground silhouette. And once I have this in, I can flip it over and make some adjustments how I want it. Because it's a little, it's a little tidy. It's a little reasonable, and I don't want it to be that reasonable. So now I can come here and be like, all right, you'd be a bigger rock. That was just a little low for you on the easel to be able to get that in. That's what it is, and I'll move my canvas to make myself comfortable. That's what I got to do. Move my canvas to make myself comfortable. And what I'm doing here is I'm coming up over to the right and then down. I'm making a foundation of landscape where it's not some smooth manicured bit of something, right? You can even come right now on your rock while it's all wet and kind of come to the top of your rock. And dry brush back a highlight. I'm going to come back with some grass in a little bit, but it's just nice to put that in now when it will blend wet into wet. So I rinsed my brush out, and I'm going to, now if you have trouble creating the line, go ahead and grab a chalk pencil and say across from here, and give yourself enough room over that there's room for your whole tree. So I'm just giving myself a little guideline that this is going to be my tree. In the base, the trunk of my tree, which is down here, 
I'm going to paint that in right now. And go ahead and give it some weird little broken branches. Like you, have you ever seen that on pines? They have the weird low broken branches. And while this is all having a little moment, now that I know where my trunk is, I can come add some grasses. And how I'm going to do that is I'm on the edge of my brush, and I'm just flicking. And I like to make sure that the wind is blowing my grass, and it's going some different directions, and it's unruly and natural looking. See? Creating that down there. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Now, while that's all having its thought, its minute, I can come up to the top of the line that I made here. I'm on the corner of my brush, and I'm going to do some small little dabs. Maybe a little dash dash off to the right, a little dash down, and that's the top of my pine. Now, my pine is widest at the base and narrow at the top. And so even as I'm bringing down my little pine branches, so I'm swooping that down, mm -hmm. give a little, little friend here in perspective. I'm going to come over to the right and swoop down a little bit. Branches are thicker towards the trunk, and they feather out. And some of them are in perspective, so they are foreshortened. In other words, we create a shorter squished line to create the feeling of distance, right? And some of them are closer facing to us and so, so they're bigger and we can see them. Maybe this branch is facing us, coming over to the right again. And you'll notice as I'm going down, the branches get stronger, they get thicker, they get more thought out. Whether you're doing this with a fan brush or a bright brush or a round brush, what you're trying to remember is the shape of the pine. What, is it, what does it do? It has, it has trying to catch sunlight with its little branches. Here's a little branch coming out, its little friend. And they have a little friend maybe in the middle. And to make a tree be more natural, you have to just think about those things the branches that broke in the wind, the fact that he might have, you know, an untidy side to him or her, it's your tree. All right, just putting this out here. I'm put one that's sort of straight down and fluttered out. You can even put one that you sort of have going off to the side. See how fun that is? Yeah. Just fun to paint a pine. I really like it. You know, if it's just overwhelming and you're like, man, I cannot do this, you know, go ahead and use the traceable. Now, you, if you had a, a, a fan brush, you could try using the ta that, this with yeah, that technique. You could absolutely use the uh, Bob Ross little happy tree technique here. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. If you've got a if you've got a pine tree that you do that you love, make that pine tree. <laughs> but basically what I'm doing is I'm creating these jagged little branches that come out. I'm using the corner of my brush. And I'm just trying to make this guy seem a little wild and unkempt. Trying to make it seem like He's got branches that have weathered storms and snowstorms. And, and now you can see what I'm saying about the trees behind me. I don't know where I'm going to go sometimes before I go. Just taking this down here. Now at the base, I'm going to just bring a strong, happy branch here. Break one down. Maybe one here. How I make this tree pop in the grass pop is in the highlight. I'm going to come pull some white paint on my brush. I'm going to come back to my grass and add some highlights to it. See? Yeah. Let's pop that grass.
This is really coming together. It's, I like the dimension that that, that that adds. Just a little slight dry brush across the trunk. Maybe talk about the trees and then along this outer edge towards the eclipse. This is still wet, so I'm going to rinse off my brush and pull some white. I don't want to take out the design that I've done, so I'm going to be so light. Sometimes I define a tree branch that was maybe hidden towards the front. See, I'm just adding this little highlight. help this tree show. There's a little branch that maybe we weren't seeing. See how we're doing? When my paint gets away from me, I can wipe off my brush and get a little more white. Just brushing this at the outer edges, the sun here. Trying to find the edges that might catch a little bit of this weird eclipse energy. There we go. Once we do that, that lets us see our tree. Yeah. Another that really little touch sense. that we might enjoy doing is some birds. Oh yeah. Some, some birds. birds. So I'm gonna come here and I'm going to make my little bird. I like to make a little dot. And I'm going to arc a little wing up. And arc a little wing up. That's a small bird. But maybe there's a closer one here and so I'm going to make more of a little kind of seed shape. Sesame seed shape. And arc a little wing up and even define out this edge of it. See that? Beak there. Little tail there. See? He's got a little more body to him, so he feels closer. Another little far away guy. So that's three. I'm going to probably do five birds. I'm going to want one bird down here in. I'm going to just arc this little V and feather that little wing off. See how I'm just creating. It's wider at the tip here. Yeah. Showing that little bird to be kind of closer and in flight. I might give it a more thought out body. So by the silhouette that you are seeing and the size of the, it tells you which ones are close, which ones are far away. And you know what I got to do now? You got to sign it? I got to sign it. I'm going to be cool crazy and on this one I think I'm going to sign it in my CAD red. Look at that. Wow. Usually I don't get that crazy with my signature but I think for this piece it's actually kind of nice. It's kind of holistic. I cannot wait to see your eclipses. I hope you guys are enjoying this crazy early morning vibe. Yeah. I think I'll be better. We're going to be back tomorrow. We're going to do a space flower. Yeah, we have space flower. flower. That's we're, right. We're space all week in the morning. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. I'm sort of excited to be doing this. Yeah, we this has been week, blah, 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 This has week. been pretty exciting. You know, we had a really great crowd here. We've had a real you. lots of people. They've really enjoyed seeing this. Everybody who got up and painted with me in the morning raw the rest of the day is going to be good because you know you started it creatively yeah and thanks for all the likes the comments the subs and all the subscribers and all the people who are here thank you guys we appreciate all that stuff you know it and uh don't forget to you know check out that and share your pictures on our website like comment and subscribe you safe i wear when you're viewing today you safe i wear when you're viewing today and i want to see you at the easel tomorrow for galaxy flower be good to yourselves be good to each other and i want to see you at the easel really soon Bye bye